Good morning, it's Morgan Crosby. I've got another awesome video for you guys today. Today we're gonna to be talking about the demographics that are buying the C8 generation and maybe some differences that have happened over the previous generations. Um, I'm in front of a really cool location. This is uh, the second McDonald's opened up in Canada. The first one was in Richmond, BC, but in 1968, this McDonald's opened up being the second one. And the um, reason why we're here is because London, Ontario has always been for corporations a very good place for us to try out new products. Because of the demographic that we have here, it's very good to be able to get a test market on the national level um, by just using one specific city. So a lot of products over the years have been tested out in London. Um, you know, Tim Horton's dark roast, but more importantly, the reason why we're here today is because the Chicken McNugget was tested out in London, Ontario first. And even further than that, there is a Cargill plant in London, Ontario that produces all the Chicken McNuggets for all of Canada here as well. So not only was this ground zero for the Chicken McNugget, but it also is the capital of where Chicken McNuggets are produced for all of Canada. So because of the amount of sales that I have, my dealership is actually right across there. You can maybe just barely see the sign for it. Um, I thought with me being from London, Ontario and that being a huge test market for a lot of products, why not go through my client list and show you the demographics and, and uh, stats on what I think has changed from this generation over previous ones. So stay tuned for more. I'm just going to hop inside the car. Okay, back inside my Corvette. Uh, gonna go through a lot of stats and numbers with you. Again, the reason why we're doing uh, a video on my numbers is because London, Ontario seems to be a good average for what the entire country does. Um, and keep in mind, you know, a lot of Americans are gonna be watching this. Uh, we're very similar to you guys in a lot of ways. So don't think that this data is, is not relevant in any way. I'm sure that our cultures um, have some differences, but for the most part, uh, we consider ourselves partners, friends, neighbors, um, um, and so a lot of that stuff rubs off on each other. So without further ado, I'm gonna to start to go into some stuff. Uh, I wanna point out some specific things that I thought are unique um, and maybe just kind of summarize them to begin with. And then I'll go into further detail about the stats as I go along. So some things that really stuck out to me um, was that there was a difference in the age group and um, a specific age group change that's happened. Um, the 70 year old uh, decade or, or age group uh, had not a single buyer uh, in my entire client base. Whereas I did have um, about five or six people last year alone that were in that kind of age group that purchased. And the 30 year old age group, I didn't go any less than 30. So I just did 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Um, the 30 year old age group it, it, um, is up 12, 12 people from uh, my previous years of data. Um, so that's a huge difference. There's nobody in the um, very up upper age group that's, that's purchasing these. And um, just to give you some insight on why I think that is, um, I, I've already had um, a lot of the Corvette clubs and groups that are affiliated with Corvettes in the area uh, come by and see the Corvette through, through a release that we had. And a couple of the comments that I received were that they're gonna wait for the vet to be um, a year old. They wanna see some things get ironed out. And those are some cliche lines that a lot of folks will always say on the forums and stuff as an excuse or, or a way of justifying why they didn't get one of the first ones. And there's no hard feelings with that in any way. Uh, I can understand why someone might have some concerns for that. And I don't consider that a write-off in terms of them never buying the Corvette. Um, I think it is some honest um, answers on why they haven't looked at getting the Corvette yet. So. Um, may be that the older age groups end up warming up to this Corvette and purchasing it down the road. Uh, but as of right now, in terms of Corvette orders, I have not a single person in the 70 year old age group uh, that has purchased it. Um, in the 60 year old age group, I do have 10% of all my total deposits and orders that have already been placed uh, in that demographic. Um, we'll, we'll go into more detail about those down the road. So I want to continue with talking about the overlying themes. And the other second one that is, is really big is the um, conquest buyer. So we call a conquest buyer anyone that comes from a different brand into our brand. Um, so in that kind of realm, we're seeing a massive change in the amount of vehicles that are coming from a different luxury performance brand. Um, just to name a few trade-ins that I have coming in, I've got a uh, Gen 2 Ford GT, uh, so a 2006. Um, I've got Lamborghini Gallardos, um, I've got a Viper, uh, I've got um, a bunch of other smaller sports cars that are a little bit older. I have an Aston Martin DB9 coming in. Um, so, you know, a lot of really 
really awesome, amazing, amazing products that um, you know have been out for a while that have been known as being some of the top vehicles, uh, and they're being traded in for a C8 Corvette. That's really amazing for me to see that. Um, Another thing that I want to point out is there's not a lot of C7 trade-ins. I only have five C7 Corvettes that have been confirmed right now that are being traded in uh, for a C8 Corvette. So that's very low um, number of, of Corvettes that I thought was going to be coming in and, and, and traded in. And uh, maybe only a handful that are that are already C7 owners that are going to keep their C7 and also purchase a C8. So very low amount of people that are in a Corvette right now that's a C7 generation that's going to trade in, uh, but there's a huge increase of the Conquest. Now, there also are some people that already own uh, a very high-end performance vehicle that are also just going to be adding to their their um, their build, their, their, their dream garage, or their, their collection. Um, and that probably is the largest segment of, of, of growth. I'm just going to name off some, some vehicles that have been in there. Um, I've got clients that own uh, a lot of Ferraris, um, F40s even, uh, Lamborghini Aventadors, a lot of Gallardos. The largest vehicle that I would say would be the Conquest would be the Dodge Viper, which again, it's an American supercar or, or very high-end performance vehicle. Some people don't like to call them supercars. I feel it is. Um, but the Dodge Viper was was definitely one of the largest uh, of the, uh, the co-ownership um, brands uh, that I saw. Um, so to go into a little bit more detail about why I think that is, I think that we're opening up the demographic to a lot more um, seasoned car collectors. Um, we were very specific and the Corvette was very unique in, in terms of what it was trying to deliver in previous generations, but we've kind of opened that up to a whole new market. And I think the older generation that's used to the more traditional Corvette is is probably reluctant to warm up to that idea and that's reflected in the numbers. Um, and the younger demographic is, is way more open to this idea and also people that have already uh, experienced what a mid-engine vehicle is like. A lot of the uh, Audi R8 people um, have already looked at, at getting some interest. And also, um, if you go onto a lot of the, the Corvette, or sorry, the Porsche and Ferrari forums, they have entire segments. I know that the Ren Sport forum has over 2,600 responses on just the uh, Corvette ownership and purchasing, uh, which is remarkable to see that there's a whole separate feed to look at purchasing a different product other than the Porsche um, that they're on the forum to be on. So that I thought was really interesting that there was a lot of, of uh, new buyers that are coming from an experienced car culture already. Um, now to go through the actual numbers of percentages, um, the biggest increase by a long shot is got to be the 30 year old age group. I am 30 years old myself, so I, I would consider myself at the bottom end. And I think that this is where General Motors is trying to gauge most of their, their customer feedback on right now because they realize that the buying power of um, of vehicles and consumer goods is starting to transfer over to my generation now. It's maybe alarming to think for baby boomers um, to no longer be the number one consumer purchasing group. Um, but yes, my generation now is the number one uh, purchasing uh, demographic in, in the consumer market. And so um, to see a 25% increase in my age group is a massive growth over the previous generation. The largest age group um, is definitely the 40 year olds. 42% uh, of all the Corvettes that I've uh, taken a deposit on or already delivered are from that. And another uh, statistic in there is 90% of all the Z06 orders that I've taken are from the 40 year old age group as well. Just thought that was really interesting that almost all of my Z06 purchases are from the 40 year old age group. Um, 50s uh, was 21% and then 60 was 10%. So that is uh, the breakdown of um, the age groups that I have in my client base that I've already taken a deposit on or already delivered uh, at my dealership. I hope that this gives you some valuable insight on where the direction of Corvette is going in terms of who is buying them and, and who's looking at getting them. And also if you're um, looking at, at getting a Corvette and, and you maybe uh, have hesitated on doing it, know that maybe you're not on, on your own. There are a lot of people that have come up to me and said, listen, I love this vehicle, but I just don't know if it's right for me yet. I want to warm up to the idea and see where this goes. And I totally understand what that, that feeling is like. Um, when I was younger, obviously I, I couldn't afford to get one, but I also was waiting to see where it goes. And, and uh, 
uh, it pays off to wait and, and to make an observation once you feel comfortable with it. We're always going to have, you know, an amazing product for you to look at with General Motors. Uh, this C8 Corvette is definitely something that I think that if you don't have enough information on, you should go to your local GM dealership and learn some more about it or stay tuned for more content on my channel. So without further ado, please hit the subscribe button. Um, I love it when you guys are able to subscribe and learn when I'm making new content. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and happy motoring.